We solicited some questions from the PaleyFest website, and one of the people wanted to know if we were ever gonna get some insight on how things were between Regina and Henry before he decided that she was the evil queen. That's a question for Eddie and Adam. Well, I think we got some insight in, um, you know, Archie gave us a little bit of insight in that they were clearly having problems um, and that she's strict. And the more she kind of loves him, the more he kind of pulled away. But, you know, what that relationship is and what it, what it could be is something that is kind of explored a little bit more this season. Okay. Uh, segwaying from evil to charming. <laughs> Josh Dallas, first of all, just give the ladies that smile that they seem to like. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about what uh, is this whole thing with Catherine? Is, is that going to be a big, long-lasting obstacle for David and Mary going forward? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. It, it certainly it's put David in a place where he is um, feels very guilty and very responsible for. Uh, her disappearance, and it's yeah, it's it's a, it's an obstacle uh, in the way of uh, of Mary and, and David, uh, but you know their love and their unexplainable attraction that is so strong will always keep drawing them together in some some sort of capacity. However, I am told that the Catherine thing will last for a couple episodes, but then it'll be basically you know, somewhat resolved, and then there's going to be another obstacle. Can you tease it all what the next obstacle is going to be? I don't know. I think that's another question for the boys. I think <laughs> I, I, the, the yeah, they, they said you might be afraid to answer. answer. We're so afraid to lose our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give anything away. I mean, we get fired. Yeah. So. I mean, the nature of the curse is, is that no one can have their happy endings. So there's, huh? yeah, the, the saga continues. <laughs> Jennifer, is, was it intimidating at all? to be cast as Snow White? I mean, did you have any grade school experiences? Uh, Snow White was my favorite, actually, of, of all of the fairy tales. And I actually really was Snow White a couple years ago for Halloween and uh, fairy I was Adam. also in Wonderland the same year, by the way, which is just totally weird. No kidding. God. And I actually, and, and this is such a side note, but I actually said to my, my little sister and I were planning our Halloween costumes, and I said, you know, my biggest dream is to be a Disney princess. And I said, and I feel like, if I'm ever cast as a Disney princess, then I can never dress up as one for Halloween because that'd be so pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be, so I'm really glad I got that part out of my system. But, um, you know, the thing about the script was that, I mean, though they were presenting us with these iconic characters, you know, they presented us with the things that were happening off page and they were fleshing out these characters and they were showing us their flaws. And so there wasn't really, I can't say there was any intimidation because it's not that we were aiming to replicate the performances of others or, um, you know, we weren't trying to bring the Disney animated feature to life or something. Mm -hmm. I feel that we justify all of those stories. You know, you can say like, oh, I can see how Disney's Snow White is kind of loosely based on the real Snow White, which we hope everyone feels this is the real Snow White. <laughs> uh, but but that gives, you know, the fact that we, we did start revealing Princess Snow White's flaws in the pilot meant that I felt very free to be creative. And you must love that she's pretty badass, too, in, oh, the, yeah. in the flashbacks. Oh, yeah, wielding a sword. I mean, I was on page, what, like 10, and she pulls out the sword, and I was like, I'll take it. I had said that before. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Rafael Sabarge, who plays uh, Dr. Archie Hopper. I understand you're gonna have some interesting people on your couch in upcoming episodes. Tell us about one of them. Uh, I guess I, I've, I've been allowed to say. Um, I'm happy to be able to be given. Um, uh, we have, uh, I mean, Archie obviously has been working mostly with Henry and trying to help him sort of uh, bridge the gap. Uh, we have uh, some new patients with um, Prince Charming, uh, as it were, and, um, and then Mr. Gold. No. <laughs> He has issues, like we all do. Yeah. Uh, Likes he, to work them out. He's got serious issues. I can imagine what that session's yeah. going to be like. <laughs> it's a double. It's and a then, double. And then what, what brings uh, David to the doc? David's got problems. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got, he's got a lot of things he needs to figure out. I mean, the guy was in a coma for 28 years, and he wakes up. He has no idea where he is or who any of these people are. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. there's a woman saying, I'm your wife. And... You used to love me, and uh, he's trying to, you know, figure that out. He's trying to figure out why he doesn't love her the way that he used to, or, or uh, is supposed to, and 
you know, dealing with uh, his feelings for Mary Margaret and, and, and why he loves, has this pull and this blinding love towards Mary Margaret that he doesn't have for Catherine, who he's supposed to. So, you know, he's got, he's got things to work through. Okay. From, from a therapeutic point of view, Archie's got some real job security, I think. <laughs> 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 <laughs>